Hello, my lovelies. Today's video falls under the heading of country life, but I am quite sure this experience is not exclusive to rural areas. I know this happens in major cities, small towns, and everything in between daily in the good old USA. I'm going to tell a story about my days working in retail and the wild Karens and Darens. That's what we call male Karens around here. You know the type of person I'm talking about? Don't pretend that you don't. We have all encountered these entitled, self-aggrandized, obnoxious people before. They tend to be middle-aged white women, but they come in all shapes and sizes and colors. Being a Karen can really interfere with your life when you live in a small town as the Karen I will tell you about today found out. Before I get into all that, I just want to say welcome to Cape Bonnie country. Thank you to each and every one of you for stopping by. So, back in 2019, I worked for a major retailer whose color scheme is yellow and black. Employees at the time were required to wear black shoes, black pants, and a black shirt. We all wore name tags that were black and yellow with the company name on them. I was an assistant store manager, so my name tag was a little thicker and engraved rather than one of the cheaper plastic ones with the label tape on it. Now, this store chain is known for small stores that carry essential items. There were plenty of things that I could not buy in my store, so sometimes I had to shop at other retailers. I was on my way home from work one day when I stopped by another major retailer who is known for the colors blue and white. And at one point in time, their mascot was a smiley face, but now it's a colorful little spark. Their employees' uniforms consisted of pretty much whatever you want to wear, as long as you have your blue vest on over it. So I was shopping in their hair care section. I had my cart. I was doing my shopping. I'm the only person on the aisle. As I'm studying the products and making my choice, a lady in one of those motorized mark carts came on the aisle. The lady appeared to be, oh, I don't know, about 10 years older than me, in that age range. And I heard her say, excuse me, can you help me for a moment? Being the nice person that I am, I looked at her and said, sure thing, hon, what do you need? And she pointed out an item that was on the fifth shelf. I could easily reach it. So I reached up, I grabbed it for her, I handed it to her, I asked her if there was anything else she needed. She said no, and I said, okay, well, you have a good day. I went back to my cart, I had my items, I walked off the aisle. Several minutes later, I'm in the pet section. I needed to get dog treats and cat food. So while I'm on the cat aisle, I hear a familiar voice say, excuse me, can you reach something for me? I look over and it's the same lady. I said, sure, I'll be happy to help. What do you need? And she pointed up to some canned cat food that was up on the tippy top shelf. Now, I am only five foot one inch tall. I cannot reach items on the top shelf at most stores. I either have to climb the shelves or get an associate to help me. I'm short. So I looked up and I said, I'm sorry, ma'am, I can't reach that. Well, at that point in time, she went from being a sweet lady asking for help to an all out Karen. To this, she said, get a ladder. I need that food for my cat. I looked at her for a moment and I said, ma'am, I don't work here. I'm not allowed to use their ladders. She got very red-faced and started yelling, You damn well do work here. You're in uniform. You helped me on the other island. You need to get an effing ladder and get that cat food for me right effing now. 
Okay, now, I'm a customer. Ain't nobody going to talk to me like that when I'm doing my shopping. I didn't even work there. But I maintained my calm. I maintained my composure. I had what I needed off the aisle. So I grabbed my cart and I started pushing it. I walked right past her as I said, Ma'am, I do not work here. I was helping you because I am a nice person. In return, you are cussing me and behaving like a spoiled brat. You really need to work on your manners. And I continued on my way shopping. Naturally, she began to scream at me as I walked off. She raised such a ruckus that the store manager that happened to be eight aisles away came to see what was going on. Of course, by the time he got there, I was off the aisle. So I continued to do my shopping. I'm over on the paper aisle grabbing some paper towels when I hear this shrill voice go, There she is! Fire her! And I was immediately accosted by... A gentleman that appeared to be her son. Now, why he wasn't with her walking around the store, helping her grab the things she needed, I have no idea. Anyway, this man I've never met before in my life comes running up to me, stands in my face, and screams at me. You! How dare you! Refuse to help my mother and cuss her! He was followed by a very confused-looking store manager who was walking about six steps behind him. And this lady in the mark cart that appeared to be going very slowly, like, you know, it's starting to lose power. And, of course, my response to all this is to go, Excuse me? To the now-present Darren. I never cussed your mother. She made a demand of me. I am a customer and started cussing me, to which I told her she's acting like a spoiled brat and needs to learn some manners. By this time, the store manager had caught up and was kind of positioning himself between me and this Darren. And the Darren started cursing me 10 ways to Tuesday. The store manager chirps in, sir, I need you to step back While I talk to this lady for a moment. And the Karen in a very shrill voice screams. You don't need to ask her an effing thing. She refused to help me. Now fire her. He gave a quick glance at the lady. Then turned back to me and said. "Um, Ma'am. What's going on here? So I told him what happened on the hair care aisle. And then I saw her later again. In the pet aisle. And she needed something I can't reach. So she demanded I get a ladder. She started screaming at me, cussing me. I told her I don't work here, but apparently she doesn't believe me. And the Darren jumps in. See, she admits it. She admits it. Fire her. At this point in time, the manager understood what was going on, gave me a quick wink, and turned to Karen and Darren. He addressed Darren directly. Sir, I cannot fire her. She is a customer. She does not work for me. So Karen chimes in. Are you stupid? Of course she works here. She's in uniform. The store manager looks at her and goes, No, ma'am. She does not work for me. Black on black is not our uniform. My employees wear blue vests. So by this point, Karen and Darren have attracted an audience. Several customers were gathering around the aisle and peeking. And three employees that I assume were from loss prevention or security also showed up on the aisle. I just know that all three of them were carrying radios. At this point in time, Darren completely lost his mind. He reached out grabbed my shoulder and screamed in my face, you effing need to apologize to my mother now. 
That's all the employees needed to see. The store manager and the three employees kind of surrounded them in a little circle. I took a step back, and the Karen was still screaming, I want her fired. Fire her now. Again, the store manager looked at her and said, Ma'am, she does not work here. She is a customer. She works at another store. And this is where the dumb really shows up. Karen, screaming at the top of her lungs, insisted that the yellow and black retailer is owned by the same company as the blue and white retailer. She then said that since we work for the same parent company, the store manager could, in fact, have me fired. At that point in time, I couldn't contain myself. I busted out laughing. No, ma'am, no, ma'am, no, ma'am. These companies are not the same. They are two completely separate companies. This store is in no way connected to the store I work for. By this time, two more employees had showed up, and there were about 20 customers standing around completely laughing at this woman. She finally got it, and she looks over and says, son, let's go. And that's when the store manager goes, no, ma'am, not so fast. You were harassing this customer, and your son assaulted her with all these witnesses. We've already called the police. You need to stick around until they get here. Come up to the office with me. And then he looked at me and said, ma'am, would you like to press charges? I looked at the defeated Karen and Darren and went, no, that won't be necessary. A slight look of relief crossed her face until I said, just trespass her away from the store. Get their information. Give it to me because I would like to trespass her away from my store as well. I don't want her coming in there and harassing me at my place of employment. This is when Karen and Darren got truly scared. The realization of what they just did began to sink in. You see, this happened in a small town. There are two independent grocery stores, this blue and white retailer, and the yellow and black retailer that I work for. But you can't buy a fuzzy toilet seat cover or a desk lamp at the grocery stores. So really, if you need groceries and other household items, well, you're either going to have to shop at three, four different stores, come to the blue and white, or go to the yellow and black. The next closest blue and white retailer is 28 miles away. And the next closest yellow and black retailer at the time was 12 miles away. Now, remember, this was back in 2019, before COVID hit, and before there was lockdowns to keep people off the streets. So gasoline cost about $4 a gallon at the time. Both Karen and Darren seemed to realize at the exact same moment how badly they screwed up. They could no longer just run down the street to grab what they needed. They would have to drive another 15 minutes to reach a yellow and black store or an extra 35 to 40 minutes to reach blue and white. And Karen started crying full on waterworks. That's not fair. I made an honest mistake. Please don't ban me from the store. It's the only place we can shop around here. And I straight up called her on her BS. I said, no, ma'am. I helped you because I'm a nice person. As soon as I told you that I don't work here and am not allowed to use the ladders, your honest mistake was corrected. You chose to cuss me. You chose to harass me. You chose to cause this scene. And your son chose to put his hands on me and assault me. You made your bed, now lie in it. 
So the circle of employees escorted Karen and Darren up to the front of the store to wait in the security office for the police. I grabbed the last few things I needed and headed for the checkout. So as soon as I finished my transaction, I put my groceries in the car, came back inside, and talked with one of the officers. The officers escorted them out of the building and to their vehicle and told them both that they are no longer welcome to shop at the blue and white or the yellow and black. The moral of this story is be kind to others. Most people will gladly help you if you ask nicely. If Karen hadn't demanded that I go get a ladder and cussed me, well, I would have gladly have walked over to electronics and grabbed one of those employees to come help her. Instead, she wanted to act all entitled and behave like a jackass. They were banned from the only two stores in this small town where you can buy toothpaste cat food, a fuzzy toilet seat cover, and a desk lamp in one place. Mind your manners, folks. I know y'all's mamas raised you better than that. If you enjoyed this little story from the retail world and Karen's in the wild, please like this video by giving it a big old thumbs up. Subscribe to and get notifications for Kate Bonnie Country by ringing that bell. Leave a comment and tell me your Karens in the wild stories and share Kate Bonnie country with all of your friends and family. This channel is not possible without your support. So thank you so much for stopping by.